Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today is a big day on the channel for two reasons. Number one, say hello to my new co-host. But all jokes aside, when I saw this in the store, there's no way I could not buy it for the channel. So uh, say hi to Cuphead. He'll probably be with us for most of my game reviews. So, you know, hope you guys appreciate him. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you guys have seen this before in the store. Me, it was the first time when I came across it last week. Secondly, the other reason why this is a big day for the channel is we're doing our first ever Switch game review. Now, if you've clicked on this video, you already know what it is. It's Collection of Mana, which is a collection of three JRPGs of the sort of hack and slash action uh, type. And basically, it retails in the US for $39.99 and here in Canada for $49.99, which is actually quite a, a high price for only three retro games. What we're going to try to see today is get an idea of what's in this collection, for you guys out there, it'll help you know if this collection is for you. And at the end, we're going to try to come to a conclusion if it's worth the price they're selling it at. So, stay tuned, grab a drink, and let's go start by taking a look at what exactly is in this new collection. First, as I said, let's break down what exactly is in this game collection. So, first of all, we have Final Fantasy Adventure which is a game that was released under the Final Fantasy title on the original Game Boy. Secondly, we have Secret of Mana to a lot of Western gaming society, which they believe is the first game in the Mana series, and it was released here for the Super Nintendo. And lastly, we have a game that was actually never released in the Western society in English, that they renamed Trials of Mana, which was released only in Japan for the Super Famicom. First question I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys out there have, why is a Final Fantasy game in a collection called Collection of Mana? The reason why is because Final Fantasy Adventure was actually part of the Mana series in Japan. It's only in for Western audiences that they renamed it Final Fantasy Adventure, trying to capitalize on the popularity of Final Fantasy to sell this new type of a JRPG, which rather than being turn-based, was an action hack and slash. So in Japan, they're called Saiken Densetsu, sorry about my pronunciation, 1, 2, and 3. They're all part of a series which is called the Mana series. So, don't be mistaken by the fact that the first game is called Final Fantasy Adventure. These are really three games that are linked by a common concept, which is mana. So, now that we've got out of the way what's in this collection, let's start by looking at each game individually to get an idea of what each game is offering you to help you get an idea if this collection, like I said earlier, can be good for you. So first, let's start with a breakdown of Final Fantasy Adventure. Final Fantasy Adventure, as I said earlier, was a game released for the classic Game Boy. So it is ultimately in black and white. Now, if you're a fan of the classic Game Boy gaming scene, you're really going to love this game. The reason why is that it is really one of those games that shows why the Game Boy revolutionized the handheld market. And if you're looking at the general gameplay, it's basically a blend of uh, Zelda Link's Awakening meets uh, an, a more turn-based RPG. There are certain elements that are based like a turn-based RPG and other elements that really evoke a Zelda, uh, Zelda Link's Awakening type of gameplay. Uh, and basically, the storyline is very simple, as a Game Boy game normally is, uh, where basically you are a slave at the beginning of the game, uh, you are fighting for your captor, which is the Dark Lord, and you realize that he is trying to use mana to bring about the destruction of the world. So obviously, being the hero that you are, you decide to set out on a quest to stop him, because you're the only one who knows about his dark plans at the beginning. So honestly, it is a straightforward game. It is not deep gameplay, but these are direct ports of the original. So the game that you're playing is the exact game that was released for the classic Game Boy. Now that has its strengths and it has its flaws. Uh, the strengths is that you, if you've never played the game and you're, like I said, a fan of classic Game Boy gaming, you're getting the original game in its original release format uh, with a few tweaks on the visual side. 
Uh, and getting to that, actually, let's take a look at what they did to sort of uh, capitalize, to help a little bit on the visual side for uh, Final Fantasy Adventure, because it's a little bit different than what they did for the two uh, Super Nintendo era games. So in the Game Boy uh, game, you basically have six different ways you can uh, see the game. Basically, it's three different color filters, and each filter you can actually either have it in the original uh, f format of the Game Boy screen, or you can have it stretched a little wider. And you should be seeing this on the screen right now examples of you know cycling through these things. So you have clear white in either the uh, blown up or original format. You have a, a sort of copper tone in once again the stretched out or the original format and lastly you have a filter that makes it look like you're looking at an original Game Boy screen and honestly I was really impressed by the fact that they added this option and um, it's maybe not the best way to visualize the game meaning that it's not the clearest image in the that with that filter but honestly after a while you really sort of forget that you're playing uh, on a modern console and sometimes it sort of evokes that feeling that you're actually playing on a uh, original Game Boy. That filter really, they, they did a pretty good job on it and I'm really impressed by that option. Um, there is a quick save feature in this one, but for Final Fantasy Adventure, it's actually a little bit less useful than the other two games. The reason why is because in Final Fantasy Adventure, you can already save through the direct game at any point. So overall, if you give Final Fantasy Adventure a chance, I'm pretty sure that you're going to fall in love with this game and it really is a piece of gaming history. Uh, now, if we move on to Secret of Mana, which is the first Super Nintendo game, uh, we're, let's take a look at what this one offers. Secret Mana of Mana was released for this Super Nintendo and honestly, probably out of the three games in this collection, most people will have regarded as the best of the three. The reason why is that the story flows a little bit better than Trials of Mana, which we'll look at later, but at the same time, going up to the Super Nintendo gives you a really big graphical advantage, gameplay advantage, and also the story this time around is a lot more engaging because there's a lot more interaction between the characters and the dialogue is a lot more fleshed out. Uh, now, this doesn't mean that this game doesn't have its flaws, because as every other game in this collection, it's a direct port of the original, bugs included. And one thing to watch out for in this game is that there are moments that could become frustrating for you, just because there's a few glitches in the game, which uh, one of the most common one is the fact that there are a few boss fights in the game where the recovery time of your character is actually longer than the time that the boss has between its attacks, meaning that if you get hit once, uh, there is a small chance that you get stuck in an infinite loop that basically means you'll never be able to recover and the boss will just kill you and you just sort of have to watch it happen. But overall, this is really a game that if you're unsure where to start in the three games in this collection, I would really recommend you start with Secret of Mana. Because although the games are tied together through the concept, like I said earlier, of mana, the storylines are not directly uh, following one another. So you could actually start with Secret of Mana, really get a, a love for the storyline and the world that they, they create in this, this game, and then you could actually play Final Fantasy Adventure after. And if you, it's the first time you're playing any of the Mana series, that's actually what I would recommend as the best play order for the games. Uh, overall, I mean, this one we're not going to spend that much time on because it's probably the game that most of you out there have already played if you're into this collection and if you're not it's really a piece of gaming history and it's already regarded as one of probably the best games on the Super Nintendo in this genre. So basically let's just look at what they did graphically for this game because like I said it's a little bit different however uh, the options are going to be the same between this one and the third game which is Trials of Mana. So on the screen now you should see an example Basically, this game has two modes in either blown up or uh, original sizing. Now, basically, uh, it's very hard to see, but if you look closely, uh, you have either where the pixels are sort of smoothed out, and you have that either in the blown up format or, like I said, the original. 
or you have as well the or original original pixels not uh, smoothed at all once again blown up or in the original format and honestly for the Game Boy game um, I'm not saying it was less interesting, but you could play in both modes. For this game, I really actually appreciate the blown up mode when you're using your Switch handheld. The reason why is that sometimes the text can be small and hard to read if you're playing it in the original format. However, if you move over to uh, playing it docked on a TV, if you're playing on a pretty large TV, the blown up format is going to look really... Uh, not that impressive graphically and the game becomes much much clearer and much better experience if you're looking at it in the original format so when you're playing through this game honestly uh, depending on whether you're playing switch docked or uh, handheld you'll probably be using both modes alternately so overall uh, secret of mana is a port of the original game I haven't obviously played through all these games yet, but since they're direct ports, I didn't really think we needed to wait to do the review till we played through them. I've done a, a few hours on each, and honestly, uh, the games are really true to, to their originals. So next, let's take a look at the last game, Trials of Mana, the final game in this collection. And once again, it's a game of the Super Nintendo era, but it was never released in the West. It was released only in Japan for the Super Famicom. Now, I've already played this game using translation packs with the Japanese ROM, and honestly, I've got to tell you that if you've ever done that, uh, this game's translations are totally different. Uh, totally different because the quality is much higher. So if you've never played uh, Trials of Mana, this is the version you want to play. The translations in, these, in, in this game are much, much clearer, much easier to follow the storyline than if you've ever used a translation pack. And honestly, I think they did a really good service to this game, bringing it to the West, because a lot of audiences now, back in the day, uh, people weren't as open to JRPGs as they are nowadays. And even though this game is much more dialogue heavy and flows a little slower than, um, than Secret of Mana, it really is an enjoyable game, especially if you've already played the other two. So if it, this is the first time you're playing Trials of Mana, and you've already played the other two games, start with Trials of Mana. So contrary to what I said earlier, if you've never played any of these games, start with Secret of Mana. But if you've already played the first two games, start with Trials of Mana. It really gives a new dimension to the, uh, to the Mana storyline. And honestly, the, the only thing I have to really say about this game is that this is the one with the hardest uh, difficulty curve in the sense that sometimes you have no idea where to go or what to do and honestly most people are going to end up checking online uh, to know exactly how to get the storyline to progress because this game really doesn't hold your hand at all like games do nowadays uh, you really have to guess who you have to talk to and there's even a day and night cycle thing where certain events only happen during the day or during the night and you have to sort of know which one of the cycles to be in to be able to have the storyline progress but at the same time if you get past those flaws uh, at the base this is really an awesome uh, classic game once again so honestly i don't think you guys uh, are going to be surprised that i like this collection so overall, do I recommend Collection of Mana? Well, that really depends, because now there's the issue of the price. Like I said, the game is $40 in the US and $50 here in Canada. And honestly, if you're a fan of JRPGs or action RPGs, honestly, this collection is really worth it. You, will, you won't be disappointed. If you like retro gaming, if you know you like the genre, it really is worth the price. However, where I'm a little bit disappointed and where I think Square Enix uh, could have done a little better is had they lowered the game price a little bit. So let's say $30 in the US, $40 in Canada. So $10 less. I could even recommend a game to try for someone who has never tried this type of game. The reason why is because at that price, if you fall in love or you like one or two of them, you don't feel you don't feel bad about the investment. However, in the end, if you're spending 40 or $50 on a game and you wind up not liking it that much, it's a big investment to make on something you're not sure of. 
So had Square Enix released this collection at a lower price, uh, they might have been able to capture audiences that have never tried uh, retro gaming or this type of JRPG. And they might have gotten more people willing to take the dive and say, look, I'll try it and see, maybe I'll, I'll fall in love with the game. So I'm a little disappointed at the price, but at the same time, uh, if you know you like the genre, you won't be disappointed, even though it's a little steeper than we would have liked it to be. So I guess you guys are all waiting for a number score as, you know, pretty much reviews always end up being. So for me, Collection of Mana is a strong 8.5. If you're a fan of the genre, you're not going to be disappointed. They really do justice to the originals and the additions that they put in the games are really appreciated. The quick saves for Secret of Mana and Trials of Mana are really, uh, you know, God saves because that was maybe one of the downsides of the games. You couldn't save anywhere and being in a handheld format, it's going to help a lot on the Switch having those options. So Collection of Mana is really a worthwhile game. If you want to pick it up, my affiliate link is going to be down below in the, uh, in the description of the video. So, you know, if you want to help the channel a little bit, buy it through my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything else, and it helps us a little bit here at Maple Syrup Tech. I'm really looking for your feedback. Since this is one of my first ever game reviews, let me know what I did well. Let me know what I didn't do well, and, you know, I'll try and get better for the next time around. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll catch you guys in my next review.